the Lord gave me this utterance, and I've, I've spoken this one to you a time or two, maybe once at least, I think twice, but this is where the Lord told me to start. So as you keep your eyes only on me, what does the Bible say? It, it says setting your affections only on things above. You remember what Colossians says? It says setting your, th- your heart on things above. So we're not to set our hearts on things around here or down here. That's not where our heart is set. Our heart is set on things above. Everybody say, my affections affections are set on things above. For there are many things going on in your peripheral view. You know what a peripheral view? That's like you're looking at Jesus, but there's still all kinds of stuff going on around you. What is that? What it's in your peripheral view? It's trying to get your attention and draw you off your main view. So uh, he said... There's many things going on in your peripheral view, and they will continue. Well, Lord, we'd like them to stop. But he said they will continue. Why? Because these are the last days. And so there's always going to be stuff going on. Well, Pastor Mark, that's not good news. Well, the good news is coming. But if you keep your eyes on me, out of the corner of your eye, you will see the wicked receive what is their due reward. But also, I desire to use you to even snatch many out of even, as it were, the gates of hell. For they have set their affections the wrong way. So he's not just leaving them out there. He's wanting you and I to go snatch them from the gates of hell. Come on, you're a snatcher. <laughs> you're, you're gonna, you're getting, you're, you're, are you ready to get somebody? Are you ready to help somebody? Are you grateful somebody told you about Jesus? Or some of you, are you grateful your mom and dad raised you in church? Maybe you aren't as grateful now as you ought to be, but one day you'll realize and you'll be really grateful. Hallelujah. So, but, but also I desire that you would snatch many out of even as it were the gates of hell. For they have set their affections the wrong way, but I want to use you and this place. I want to use you and this place. And I was ministering, the Holy Ghost was ministering to our leaders. That was all of our under shepherds, our deacons, and our leaders. And so he said, I want to use you. So he was talking to them and me. And he wants to use you. Everybody said, the Lord wants to use me. To do what? What does he want to do? What does he want to use you to do? He wants to use you in this place and even those of you in this room to draw them out of darkness and bring them into the glorious light. For it is a season. For it is a season and an hour of harvest. Have I not told you? Did I not say unto you? And it is that season. For I will visit you. So in the season of harvest, God said he's going to visit us. Visit, Lord. And it says, and then I said, and you will. And then I got to doing some ha-ha's and some tongues, and was getting drunk. Then it said, this is the season to be grateful. Are you and I grateful? How many of you don't have to wait to be Thanksgiving and have a turkey in front of you to be thankful? This is a season. So he said, it's a season of harvest. It's a season to be grateful. This is a season to rejoice. Remember, he kept saying that in, in December. And so he's telling the leaders again that it, you've got to rejoice. And I have to repent in front of you because I was just asking the Lord, Lord, why, why is this not working? And he asked me personally, he said, how much time do you personally spend rejoicing? You just go to church and fuss at them when they're not rejoicing, but how much rejoicing are you doing? Fine. And it's true. It's true. He said to rejoice. And if, that's the, if I don't have to go to a country where uh, preaching Christianity is illegal and put my life on the line, if all he asked me to do was rejoice, I think I could do it. You would think we could do it better. Everybody say rejoice. So it's a season to be grateful. It's a season of harvest. It's a season to be grateful. And it's a season to be rejoicing. Those are all good things. What is harvest? Grateful, rejoice. It's a season to shout and dance. Hallelujah. Well, that's a good season. Uh-huh. I said, that's a good season. Amen. It's a season to shout and dance and be glad. And he says, for I will cause you to rejoice because you will see the things that I, do, I will do in your midst. But begin to be grateful. Begin to rejoice. Begin to be glad and leave the care of this world behind. For all they do is choke out my word. So the cares of this world do what? They choke out the word of God. So for all they do is choke out my word. How many know this is full of the word of God? Because it's the Holy Ghost. And he's not going to have me say cutesy stuff. He's going to have me say what the word says. 
and my out of my um, begin to be grateful, begin to rejoice, be glad, uh, uh, leave the cares of the world behind because all it does is choke out my word that's living on the inside of you. So lift up your eyes and rejoice and be glad. And even the heathen will say, The Lord has done great things for them. And you will say, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get an amen? And so I had this on my heart tonight, and I don't know how it's all going to work, but it's the word of God. It will all work together. What the, then the two words, I did get a little bit of something as I began to take my nap. I got the word strength and joy. Now, what is a saturation meeting? A saturation meeting is where you come to get saturated. It's happening right now uh, by all the rain we're getting. What happens to soil, and especially in Alabama, what happens to red clay when it's full? There's nowhere else for it to go. So it pools on the top. Bear it in my backyard, just right in front of my beautiful bird feeders. I could tell it has rained a lot because all the grass is gone and there are clumps of clay everywhere. And there is a river through one of my beautiful beds that I have worked hard to keep. It's just a river. And now all the mulch is gone. And the plants are hanging on for their life. <laughs> saturation. You see, you don't get to the point of saturation until you're full. When you're full, then you're ready to be saturated. So some of us in this room, some of you, some of me, whatever, all of us, let, let's get full and then let's not stop at full. Let's be that cup that runs over. And that's what saturation is. The picture is rain coming from heaven, falling on us, and we get to the place of saturation because you're really no good to God until you're running over. You're, re uh, yeah. you're really no good to God until you're run. That's why he said you got to go and tarry in Jerusalem and receive be endued with power from on high. He said, don't go out without any power. Don't go witnessing. Don't try attempt to do this on your own. You got to be full of the power of God. Yes, get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes, speak in tongues. But then you know what happened afterwards. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And then what, that guy, Peter, I was talking about, remember, I don't know him. I don't know him. Cuss, cuss. I don't know him. Then he boldly stood up. He said, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. He went from denying Jesus, which is no small thing. Yes, yes. Right. Today, after you're born again, if you deny Jesus, there's some things you could lose. Spiritually speaking. He denied him three times. I don't know him. That's serious stuff. Especially for someone who was scheduled to preach the first sermon. I know the rest of them went out in the 70 and the 12, they all went out. But he, the most important sermon was the start of the church and Peter was on tap to speak and yet he's off fishing and denying Jesus and feeling sad. But then he went to the upper room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven yes. and the power of God fell and the fire of God fell. Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just know the Lord wants to do some things for us in this hour. And I, he wants to do some things for you. So I, I, won't, I won't wait a long time. But I personally need to get somewhere tonight. And I hope you'll help me get there. Um, I'm ready for some fresh oil. The psalmist said he would anoint you with fresh oil. What does that mean? I mean, all oil from God is good, but you need some fresh oil. If you're running on 10 years ago, Holy Ghost, you need some fresh oil. He will anoint you with fresh oil. God is always pouring out. The Bible says in Acts that he poured out of his spirit. He didn't pour out everything he had. Are you kidding me? He didn't pour out everything he had. And even in the book of Acts, I showed you that there was the day of Pentecost. But then remember after uh, Peter and John were told not to preach or teach anymore in the name of Jesus, they went back to their own company. They were all prayed. And what happened? The Holy Ghost fell. I mean, in Cornelius' house, the, the, uh, in Acts chapter 10, you know, the Italian guy, remember him? He loved the Lord, and, and he had a vision, and then Peter went and preached to him. Remember that? And they were all together hearing what, about God, and the Holy Ghost fell. The Holy Ghost loves to fall. Amen. How do I catch him? Be open. Hallelujah. Just be, you got to catch him, though. 
Because he, he can, you, one person on your left and on your right can all catch him, and you can just sit there. Like as some teenagers I've seen lately in the room do. I'm sure that's been cured, hopefully. I heard it wasn't all cured, but I, I, I hope it was cured for a lot. Amen. Hallelujah. You do your teenage friend or your adult friend or any friend a favor if you just jab them in the side if they're just sitting there. And tell them, you better catch this. Hallelujah. You better get a hold of this. You're in the room. Hallelujah. Might as well get something. Might as well have something that will change your life. Hallelujah. 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 And then in Acts chapter 19, you know, they, they were trying, to, and they were going on the revelation they had. What was, it was just not much. John's baptism. And, they, and then they got them born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. And it says the Holy Ghost fell on them. Yes. The Holy Ghost falls, and he wants to fall on you, and I need him to fall on me. Hallelujah. We are coming into a time that the Masipa Palaninkinje and the Dusalo and the receipt of the Rendata of the Monsulu Brefende. And this is the time for the Mangrande. And this is the time for the Ristache. And this is the time for the Bagande La Pofola Rasa Talaraba. But there will be those that will see the Lalomoko and the Manchele Brefante and the Luca Nomongo. And there will be others that will Sala Bramfande and the Mangrande. For this is the season again that I would pour out of my spirit upon your flesh and if you would look to me the author and the finisher of faith I would do great things in you and establish you in this season in this hour but if you look the other way and to your left and to your right and do not set your affections on things above the things of this world begin to eat at you and as it were will even to crumble your sure foundation but if you would look to me the author and the finisher of your faith I will show up your foundation. I will soar up that which you stand on and when the rains come and the winds blow, it will not cause you to be knocked out of the race. But look only to me and no one else. Set your affections on things above. But many others will set their affections to the other things. To the things of this world. They'll be like Demas of old. And they will set their affections on the things that are temporal, on the temporary, and they become consumed by them. And others will pull away from my presence, and others will look to other things for satisfaction. But if you will look only to me, I will cause many blessings, much favor to be on your life. And surely I would say to you again that even the heathen will say of you, the Lord has done great things for you. Be glad and rejoice. Hallelujah. 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 If you're not familiar with that, that's tongues and interpretation according to Acts chapter 14. Um, that happens to me a lot when I'm preaching. But if you're not familiar with the gifts of the Spirit, if somebody told you they passed away, they were wrong. The Bible's right. Religion is always wrong. Hallelujah. Because um, religion will always tell you, God don't do that no more. God don't do that no more. God don't do that no more. But God do do that. Because he's the same. Amen. Well, let's see. So I have these words, strength and joy. So uh, could anybody use any strength in the room? Psalms 29.11 says the Lord will get Psalms 29.11. They don't have the scriptures, so we'll see if they can keep up. I don't know who's up there. We'll see how good they are. Psalms 29.11, the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Psalms 46.1 says God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Come on, God is your refuge and your strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Isaiah 41.10, fear thou not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. 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 I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Or he could have said, I'm going to uphold you with Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm strong in the Lord. 
The Bible says this in Colossians 1.11, that we would be, Colossians 1.11, we'd be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto patience and longsuffering and joyfulness. Ephesians 3.16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with all might in his, by his spirit in your inner man. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God has always been a God of strength. He's always promised his people's strength. He's always promised them the power. He's always promised them the ability to withstand anything that the devil does. He has promised them strength in their inner man. He strengthened you with the power of God on the inside of you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead will even quicken your mortal body. That'll help you with sin. It'll help you with sickness and disease. It'll help you. The strength of God lives on the inside of you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Psalms 27 1 says the Lord is my light. Psalms 27 1 says the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Come on this is sassy. When you got God on the inside of you the greater one lives on the inside of you. You will boldly say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, you condemn it. That means when the devil's talking to your mind, you tell him he's lost his mind because you're not going to buy what he has to sell today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Glory to God. If God be for you, Brother Hagin used to say it this way, if God be for you, who cares who's against you? Well, the devil, the devil, the devil is defeated, is defeated, is defeated. He's chasing me, he's chasing me. You ought to turn around and chase him because that's the way it's supposed to go. Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and the Bible says he will flee from you. That word flee from you means to run from you as in terror. The devil's got you on the run. You better turn around and put it the other way. Hallelujah. <laughs> The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Why? Because if God be for me. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. My father is God, and I will exalt him. Psalms 18.2 says, the Lord is my rock. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I like the psalmist said, the Lord is my strong tower. I run into him, and I am safe. The Lord is my rock. My fortress, my deliverer. Remember, the Holy Ghost just said, you know, Jesus told us that if you'd be a doer of the word, you would build your house on a rock. And when the winds came and the rains came and the storms came, that you would not be moved. But those who do not build their house upon the word of God. In other words, they hear the word, but they don't do the word. So these are two people in the exact same storms and the exact same thing of life. Everybody in this room hearing the same thing. But if you don't do it, you're building your house on sinking and sand. You're building your house on something that's unstable. But if you'll be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, Jesus said, Jesus said, and the Holy Ghost said to you tonight that if you'll build your house by doing the word of God, when the storms come, when the wind blows, when the rain comes, when the floods come, it will not come near you. And then the heathen will say, what's up with that? What's up with that? And then you can say, I've built my life by doing the word of God. Jesus is my savior. He's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. He's my healer. He's my provider. He's my Lord. He's my everything. Uh, amen. Hey, do you want to serve him? That's how you get this done, by serving him and doing what he says. Amen. The Lord is my rock, 
my fortress, my deliverer, God, my God, my strength. Everybody say, he's my rock, he's my, rock. My, fortress, my fortress, my deliverer, my, deliverer. my God, my, God. My, strength. my strength. I trust him. He's my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and he's my high tower. Woo, that'd be a good song. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is all those things. He is my deliverer. He is my strength. Amen. So the Lord promises you strength. But I, 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 strength and joy go together. How do you get strength? Well, you've got to believe the word. What do you got to do? All those things I gave you, you notice I got excited. Um, the anointing dropped on me, yes. But you begin to talk about God being strong and strength. What does it do? It just kind of bubbles up on the inside of you. That strength begins to get stirred. Because Jesus is on the inside and said, yeah, that's me. Holy Ghost is saying, yeah, that's right. And it just begins to rise on the inside of you. And then you know this one. How do you get strength? Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31, he gives power to the faint. Have you ever felt faint? Have you ever almost fainted? I think it happened to me twice. Once was in an emergency room in Paris, Illinois, after I got a tetanus shot. Once was in healing school with Opal. It is a weird thing to faint. What is faint? You lose all your strength. You, you lose consciousness. So the Lord said, this is big then. He gives power to those who feel like they're about to get knocked out. You're in the right room if you feel like you're about to get knocked out. He gives, we just read it. We don't think what it means. Faint means I'm about out. He gives power to who? Those who feel about knocked out. Does anybody qualify? And to them that have no might. There it is again. And does what? I, feel like, I don't feel like I can put one foot in front of the other. But he increases your strength. How, he increases your strength. You're going to get tired doing this on your own in the last days. Listen to me. You're going to get very tired doing this on your own in the last days. You cannot do it on your own. You never were supposed to do it on your own. But it's going to be so obvious in the last days among Christians, spirit-filled ones and all of them, who's doing it in their own strength, who's having church in their own strength, who's doing whatever they're doing in their own strength. It just won't work. Verse 30, even the youth shall faint. So it's not about what age you are and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31, but, everybody say but. <sighs> Those that wait upon the Lord. Yeah. What were they doing in the upper room? What were they doing in the upper room? They didn't know what they were doing. They just went to do what? Wait. Because Jesus said go and wait. What were they doing? Waiting. What were they doing? They're just sitting around playing Monopoly. Just sitting around watching the latest sports program. What were they doing? They were praying. They were in God's presence. They were waiting on the Lord. In other words, they were, they were, in, they were in this vertical mode here. And they were, they were, but they didn't know what was going to happen. And what the Lord was doing was to give them power or strength. And he says, those that wait upon the Lord will renew. That means one time you had it, but now maybe it's not there. Don't raise your hand. But you can't keep living on yesterday's oil. How many know, I know everybody knows this, but my dad, you know, when he got, helped me get, I got a, my car, my 72, I talk about it with, I, I missed that car. I wish I had that car. Uh, um, if somebody wants to go buy me one, I'm fine with it. Uh, a 72 Dodge Charger. Um, it was like a, an olive green with the little, uh, the, 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 on the headlights, the little things came down and went up. It was just so cool. And my dad was making me cool and trying to help me. And he helped. And so, but I remember he said, now, when I got this car home, he said, you're going to have to learn how to change the oil and change a flat tire. And I remember looking at him and said, Dad, I don't need to do that. I said, I'm going to make so much money that somebody's going to do that for me. He said, I don't care. He said, so we, we had to do it. And so I learned early how to change oil. And if you let it go too long, which I did occasionally, and my dad would have to fuss at me, 
it was nasty when it came out. It was like really gunky and yucky. I hope none of your spirits are like that. When's the last time you had a good oil change? The Bible, the psalmist talked about fresh oil. So you're here on a saturation night, so that means you, you want some. Are you ready for some fresh oil? So you have to, I, I believe, asking for it, positioning for it. But it has a lot to do with strength. And so those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Verse 30, nothing. We're, we're done there. Hallelujah. Okay. You all know this one. Nehemiah 8.10. Nehemiah 8.10. There's a part of it there. Let's just look. It says, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your. I said the joy of the Lord is your. So what are we supposed to be doing? So we're having, so the Lord has promised us strength. The psalmist throughout the Old Testament, um, New Covenant, New Testament, epistles, Jesus, everybody's talking about you and I having strength. And that strength is available to us. And it seems to have a companion called joy. Because this Bible says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Turn to your neighbor and say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So I've talked to you about this many times. I remember so many years ago, the Lord told me my cross to bear was to be a, a minister of joy. And we said, what? And I said, but see, the way the Lord uses me sometimes, sometimes I look uh, foolish. Um, and, and, um, you know, if I get out there far enough, I really just don't care. But sometimes I, I get halfway out there and then I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? And so I have to be careful that I don't let people pull me out of the spirit. And then there's a lot of people who say, well, do you have to have joy? Do you have to laugh? Do you have to act a certain way? You don't have to, you get to. Well, that's not my personality. Well, that's the problem. Your personality is greater than your God. <laughs> Shove that one back down. Hallelujah. <laughs> that came out before I had a chance to grab a hold of it. <laughs> Woo. I'm serious. That one was out. I mean, that was just, that was just out. That didn't even come from up here at all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I understand it. You know, some of you don't know me very well, but before Jesus and before, I'm a, I, in my, my personality, I'm very shy. Um, I don't like to talk one-on-one to people because I was always afraid I was going to say something stupid. And therefore, my greatest fear always came upon me and I'd always said something stupid. And then I would go home for two or three hours, unpack everything I said, wonder how I could have said it better, why I said it that way, why I let this happen, why don't I have any friends, how, you know, because I'm always saying something stupid, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. And the Lord really, uh, the devil really did talk me into almost becoming an introvert. There were a few places where I uh, shined, but as a whole, and then, um, you know, uh, I, 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 public speaking. We had to take speech classes. Most of you heard me say this, but I was so nervous. My right leg, leg shook so hard. My teeth rattled. Um, and, um, it was awful. And, um, but Jesus changed my personality. He, he literally changed my personality. Cause if, if I wouldn't tell people that they would be like, no, I still sometimes have problems, and I have to work at it sometimes to feel like, no, that's not me. When I get into a room that I'm not preaching or people don't know me, I used to hang back. As a matter of fact, when Pastor Ron and I get married, because she, she didn't tell on herself a whole lot today, but she is the life of the party. She is a party all wrapped up in one. And if she really let go, uh, when, Des- when Destiny was little, and, and uh, Rhonda, you, Pastor Rhonda used to entertain us. It was like a one-woman show. <laughs> And we used to laugh, and she has the cutest little voice when she's, um, and I mean, she, she's out there. But the Lord told her to rein hers in, and, um, but when we first got married, we would go anywhere, and I would open the door, and I would say, you're on. And I would walk behind her and just... <laughs> <laughs> 
And then, I, then, then when I had had all I could, I would go like this. And then she would, and we'd have to go. And she was having fun. But now, it's kind of equal or opposite. The Lord can change your personality. Look how he cleaned that up for whoever I was talking to. <laughs> Personalities can change. And they need to. Hallelujah. But what does that? Fresh oil. What does that? The strength of God. What did it for me? It's the joy of the Holy Ghost. I would say it again. Say, I'm strong. I'm strong. I, have I have joy. I have victory. The joy of the Lord is my strength, right? Say it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So where there's strength, there's also joy. So you can't say I'm strong in the Lord and have a dill pickle face. You can't say I'm strong in the Lord and look like you've been sucking on lemons. You can't can't have the strength and and then there be zero joy or joy absent from your life. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit, and you and I ought to have joy. And the Lord uses joy. And so for me, he told me that. He's like, I need you to be a, I was like, uh, uh, how I got it sometimes was like, I'm a joy jump starter. You know, when your battery goes dead on your car, you need someone to come jump you. And so I got some jumper cables. Amen. I don't know if we're going to use these jumper cables tonight. I like it better when the Holy Ghost starts on one end of the room and goes to the other, and you all just get it on your own. We'll see what he wants to do, and I'm not going to force him to do anything because I can't, but I do know what he wants to do tonight. Come on. Are you on this holiday? You're here. Are you ready to get everything that he has? What produces joy? Jeremiah 15, 16 says, thy words were found. I did eat them. So if I've got any eaters of the word of God, this is what's going to be. And your word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. See, if you're this person and you say, well, I'm just studious of the word of God. I'm a word person. I'm a word person. And you're sad, sour, and mean. You've got the wrong word. I said, you got the wrong word. If you're really a word man or a word woman, you would be the person with the most joy in the room. You would be the person with the most compassion in the room. You would be the most fun to be around in the room. Yeah, but God is serious. I did find your word, I did eat them, and the word was in me joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord. So if I find his word and I do eat it, what should appear in my life? Joy and what? Joy and what? What do you tell us to do? Rejoice. Rejoice. And so how do we rejoice? Well, we get more of the word in us. We find his word, we do eat it, that means do it, we eat it, we partake it, we do it, and it's the joy and the rejoicing of our soul, of our heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 15, 11, Jesus said this, he said, these things I've spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you and your joy might be full. What are the things Jesus spoke to us? Well, they're the word of God. If you're hearing what Jesus spoke to you, that his joy would be in you and your joy would be what? What's full? Full to God means exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. Full to God means my cup is full and it runs over. God is never full to the brim. God is full always running over. Running over, running over, running over, running over. Come on, there's not a river coming out of you. There's rivers of life coming out of you. He doesn't just do a river. He's God. He couldn't just limit himself to a river. Are you kidding me? He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers, plural. He's God. He can't do one river. He doesn't know how to do one. He doesn't know how to do things small. He does things big. There's rivers of life flowing out of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These things I have spoken to you that my joy might remain in you. We are supposed to be full of joy and have victory and that your joy would be full. Full, full, full. Hallelujah. John 16, 24. John 16, 24. Jesus said this, hitherto you ask nothing in my name. Ask and receive. So can I tell if people I'm ministering to are receivers or just hearers? If you're asking and you received it, then you have what? Well, it's hard to tell if you're in faith. It's not hard to tell if you're in faith. Well, I don't know if I'm in faith or not. You're not. 
Help me to find out if I'm in faith. I can tell you you're not. If you have to ask me, you're not. Well, I don't know. Okay, well, let's know. Because you can know. Are you with me? So when we ask... Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. This is the confidence I have in him. If I ask anything according to his will, I know that he hears me. I know he hears me. I know that I have them. If you know you got it, then what's the next thing? Joy. Or peace or rest. They're all manifestations, but there's a manifestation of your belief. Not just when it shows up. When it shows up, that's sight. I said when it shows up, that's sight. But when you believe something, there's a manifestation. There's rest, there's peace, and tonight we're talking about joy. And Jesus said, when you ask the Father something in my name and you receive it, then your joy will be full. That your joy would be full. I think at the same time, yes, when it shows up, you're going to be happy. People always get confused with me. They think, you know, when I'm believing for something big and it happens, that why aren't you more excited about it? Well, did you see me a year ago running around the room? That's when I was excited about it. I expect it to show up. I expect it to show up. I expect it to show up. If you have to wait till you see it to rejoice, that sight has nothing to do with faith. When you believe something, Jesus said, when I told you something and you do something and you believe something, he said, then when you believe it, your joy is going to be full. What is full? Overflowing. People will be looking at you. You got something big going on and you're full of joy and you got victory and you're laughing and you're shouting and you're jumping up and down and you're dancing and you're ministering to people and you're loving on people. And they're like, what is up with that? That would make me, that would put me in a fetal position. But that, what do you know about that? that person they're in faith they're in victory because they have joy joy come on you know when you believe something I said you know yeah but pastor Mark there's it's a struggle to faith chapter and verse faith is a rest well it's hard well there is a fight to get in and stay in faith But then after you get there, just rest. Just have some joy. Well, I don't feel like it. When you all feel like you finally got it, rejoice. Wow. Hallelujah. Come on. I love, you know, I don't know. We all have seasons too when we're doing better than others. And if tonight you're like, man. I need an encouraging word. Well, here's one. Paul, remember he was on the ship. You remember that? Uh, He told them not to go. He said, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. And they didn't listen. So in the middle of the storm, and so while they're up there thinking they're all going to die, they're all going to die, he goes and meets with the Lord in the belly of the ship. While they're all going to die, he decides if I'm going to die, I might as well go while I'm talking to the Lord. So he goes to the belly of the ship. But he knew in himself, I think he knew, that he wasn't going to die because he had an appointment that he had to make. And so he's in the belly of the ship. And remember after he hears from the Lord, what does he do? The first thing he goes up and he, and he, and he, is he what's the first thing he does? Is he go up and give them all kinds of instructions. The Lord said this, the Lord do this. That's not the first thing he did. What's the first thing he did? Everybody say cheer up. Now I've been, I remember, you know, about a year ago for two years, we, I did this one all the time. Because we were all going through that mess um, we all needed some of this, right? But uh, just because that mess is over, what if there's a new mess? Pastor Mark, don't you prophesy that. We're living in the last days. I don't have to prophesy nothing. <laughs> but what if there's a new mess? The word's still the same. Everybody say, cheer up. Cheer up. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't tear up, cheer up. Cheer up. So what did he tell them? Why did he tell them to cheer up? Why did he tell them to cheer up? Because he, he said, I have heard from God. Have you ever heard from God? Well, can you read? Then you've heard from God. Well, I need him to talk to me personally. Well, but if you can't believe what he got written down, why can't you just believe that? And then he can talk to you personally. So I, I've heard from God. I've heard from God. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I've heard from God. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed from the curse. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Cheer up. But you notice in the middle of the storm, what was he doing? Changing the atmosphere. 
The storm was still, what was he doing? Changing the atmosphere. God moves better in joy. <laughs> he can't really move in doubt. I, said, I was going to say, he moves better in joy than he does in doubt and despair. But he can't move at all in doubt and despair. He can't. Doubt will cause you to sink, ask Peter. But joy, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Joy is produced from believing the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Psalms 5, 11. I guess I need to tell you the verse, and 12. But let all those that put their trust in you do what? Rejoice. Let them what? Rejoice. And let them ever shout for? Because you defend them. Let them also that love your name be joyful. Now, I got anybody in here that loves the Lord? Amen. Do I have anybody in here that really trusts the Lord? Amen. Do you trust the Lord? Yes. Do you trust him? Yes. Well, then stand up. Do you trust him? Yes. What are you supposed to do if you trust him? Rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We trust you. We trust you. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. We rejoice. We shout for joy. We shout for joy. We shout for joy. Hallelujah. 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 Psalms 28, 7. Stay standing. It says, the Lord is my, Psalms 28, 7 says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. Do you trust him? Yes. Then I, and it says, then I'm helped. Because I trust him, I'm what? I'm helped. The helper's in the room. The Holy Ghost is the helper. The Lord is my strength. We've been talking about strength. The Lord is my shield. My heart trusts him. Everybody say, I trust you, Lord. And I am what? Helped. I'm helped. I'm helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. Therefore, come on, do you trust him? Is he your strength? And I'm helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, I will praise him. Come on, with my song, I will praise him. I, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. You are my strength. You are my shield. You are my very present help in the time of trouble. My heart rejoices. 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 In the Messiah. Psalms 126. Psalms 126, verses 1 through 3. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Hallelujah. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Remember the Holy Ghost just said that and he said it over and over. The heathen are going to say about you and me, the Lord has done great things for them. But what do we got to do first? Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha. Ha, 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 Pastor Mark, are you trying to make me laugh? Well, yeah. You know, if someone can lead you in singing, if someone can lead you in singing, then someone can lead you in laughter. The Bible says laughter is a command of God. Laughter is part of joy, and you're full of joy, and you have the victory. And he said, then was our mouth filled with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Ha! 
Ha 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 Lord I'd like to re up for my assignment I would like to re up for my assignment Hallelujah Hallelujah joy unspeakable full of glory then was my mouth filled with laughter ha 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 verse 3 verse 3 The Lord has done great things for us. Are you saved? Are you sanctified? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Are you healed in your body? Has he blessed you? Are you delivered? Are you in your right mind? Hallelujah. The Lord has done great things for you. The Lord has done great things for you. Come on, if we're grateful, if we're grateful, if we're really grateful, you'd rejoice with joy. You'd rejoice with joy. Hallelujah. The Lord has done great things for you. The Lord has done great things for you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Well, I keep quoting it almost, so I'm going to read it to you. Hallelujah. Someone told me one time, that, you know, like people say, Brother Hagen's picture is by Mark 11, 23 and 24. And they said that my picture was by 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Whom having not seen, you love. In whom though you doubt, you don't see him now, though you see him not, yet believing. Do you believe? Yes. I have believed. I do believe. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, no matter what I'm going through, I have believed. The Lord, the hand of the Lord came upon me some 35 years ago and delivered me out of a miry pit. He lifted me up out of a dunghill, literally, and set me with the princes of his people. I know where I speak of. The Lord can lift you up out of a pit. Has anyone been lifted up out of a pit? Like Pastor Rhonda was talking about this morning. Up out of the miry clay. Come on. Dung hills aren't pretty. Hallelujah. But I don't know how he does it, but he can lift you up without any smell left on you. And set you among the princes. But whom you have not seen, you love him. Ever say, I love you, Lord. And though you see him not, yet I believe. Everybody say, I'm believing, Lord. It's present ongoing. I'm believing, Lord. And what happens? You rejoice. With joy. You rejoice with the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on. I have joy. It's a fruit of the Spirit. I have joy on the inside of me because I believe something. I did find your words. I did eat them. And they were the joy and the rejoicing of my soul. And I believe something. I believe something. I believe this is our season. I believe this is the season of harvest. I believe it's our appointed time. I believe it's our due season. And we will reap if we don't be weary. Hallelujah. I see you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. So I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice with joy. With joy. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's unspeakable. If it, see, speakable is I rejoice with joy. If it's unspeakable, then it's not words. What is it then? Ha, ha, ha. It could be a wooey. It could be a wooey. It could be a wooey. It's unspeakable. It's too much just to talk about. I said it's too much just to talk about. It's got to be shown. 
Oh, Pastor Mark, you know, I think that was a movement. You know, I know it happened in the book of Acts, and it was a movement in the 90s. Listen, I was laughing and rejoicing before it was ever a movement. And I'm still laughing and rejoicing. To be honest, not as much as I'd like and not as much as I should be. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to kick it up. I'm going to kick it up. I'm going to kick it up. So if I kick it up at home, it's going to be kicked up in church. I'm going to kick it up. I'm going to kick it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are, are you ready to get kicked up? Are you ready to get it kicked up? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I rejoice with joy, unspeakable, unspeakable, full of glory, full of glory. Listen, listen, listen. On the day of Pentecost, they did not know what they were getting into. They heard from Jesus. He talked to 500, 120 showed up. Mama Mary and the rest of them, the apostles, they got together and prayed. They didn't know what was going to happen. And as they waited, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And as they prayed, as they prayed, if you believe something, then you'll have joy. And as they were there, suddenly, suddenly, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As they waited and they worshiped and they prayed. As they, I'm going to keep running into it. Uh, as they worshiped and as they prayed and as they waited on the Lord, then suddenly there came a, suddenly, suddenly there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it sat on them. And they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now listen to me. Now listen, because, you know, I know that people say, well, you know, but this is the pattern. And you can't change it. And you can't change God. And I showed you it wasn't a one-time event. After they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, then Peter stood up and began to preach. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Oh, I forgot. Cuss, cuss. I don't know him. And then he got filled with the Holy Ghost. And they got filled with the fire of God and then the joy of the Lord. And it said, uh, he picked up the book or he began to preach and it said what? And it shall come to pass in the last days. Well, this is as last as it gets, y'all. I said, this is as last as you, as you go boda. It's a la maga. It's a kuboko. It's the last days. And I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Do you have flesh? Pinch your neighbor. No, don't pinch your neighbor. Hallelujah. They've got flesh. You know, your flesh needs it. Well, I just want to have a spiritual awakening. Well, your spirit's born again. It's full of the Holy Ghost. But your flesh is what the problem is. I said, your flesh is what the problem is. And you and I have an advantage that they never had in the old covenant. We can get God on our flesh. I said, we can get God on our flesh. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead will quicken, make alive even your mortal flesh. I will pour out all my spirit on all your flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And all my servants and my hand mornings will pour out on those days my spirit. And then, but, 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 you know, and all this began to happen. And then, um, Everybody was looking around, and so after he preached to them. But before that, he had, he had to fix something because these 120 came out of the upper room. See, we, people skip from day of Pentecost, Peter preached. But there was something in the middle. And then 120 people, and there's a lot more of you in here than 120, but they was acting up. Something happened to them. Something happened to them. Pastor Mark, are you trying to put this on? I'm just trying to read you the word and let the Holy Ghost do the Holy Ghost because you need this more than you think you do. I need this more than I know I do. You need this more than you think you do. 
Because if he did it with the early church, the beginning of the church, then he wants to really do it this way at the end of the church. Come on, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the glory of the former house. You see what he did in the former house? You double, triple, quadruple that, and that's what's going to happen in the latter house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, uh, verse 13 of Acts 2, and others mocking. Well, I get a concern sometimes if somebody wants to mock me, but let's get over it. These men are full of new wine. In other words, they said, these dudes, this, these 120 are drunk. But they didn't know they'd just been with Jesus. He likened it unto wine. And Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice to him, You men of Judea and all that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto my words. They're not drunk like you think. He didn't say they weren't drunk. Listen, you let the Holy Ghost get on you and the cares of this world will pass away. But you got to know... <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta know that. What do we gotta know? I forgot what we go had to know. <laughs> I did. I forgot what we had to know. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! They mocked, but, but listen, having God in your life is more important than what others think. And listen to me, if you're in this room like me and you're more, con and I was there and I have to watch not to get there, you care more about what other people think. Listen, I know some people that they would love to, like, um, I want everything to be normal and then, I'm, then we'll bring people to church when it's normal. Well, then you're just going to turn out with normal people. And you're not supposed to be normal. Well, I don't want to be crazy. Well, you want to be crazy for Jesus, and you want to be different. They already got what they got. They need what you got. And you know what? You have to be, listen to me. God doesn't, we have separate, this is saturation meeting. Sunday mornings, you know, we preach, teach, we'll follow the Holy Ghost. If we have a tongue interpretation, we'll do it. We'll do whatever he says. If we lay hands on people, we'll do it. We'll do whatever he says. So it's always a Holy Ghost church. But these meetings are set apart for you to get full. Everybody say, the joy of the Lord, the of the Lord is, my is my strength. So these men are full of new wine. They're not drunk. They're not drunk like you think. They're drunk. See, but it's about 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Bible says laughter does good like a medicine. 
<laughs> They're not drunk as you suppose. They're not drunk as you suppose. He didn't say they weren't drunk. He just said they're not drunk as you suppose. What is that? What's the purpose of that? Well, it's the Lord trying to get you out of your head. Is the Lord trying to get on your flesh? Hallelujah. What are we supposed to be doing? Well, we need strength. How do you get strength? Joy. What, how do you get joy? I rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. I rejoice with what? How do you, how do you rejoice with joy? I did find his word. I did eat it. It was the joy and the rejoice. So I rejoice with the word. I believe the word. I, I, I have a promise. I know it's mine. I rejoice over that promise. And then you just get so full of God that it turns into laughter. It turns into joy. It turns into jumping up and down. Hallelujah. Y'all, we're just getting started real good. Hallelujah. Now, do you want to, some of you, maybe this is different. This is different. Well, let me tell you this, what joy will do for you. Yeah. Um, some, goodness, 1990, uh, I guess it had been 1991, I'd moved back home, and I was um, uh, doing some ministry, and I got, I don't know, just things were a mess at this little church, and um, it wasn't going really well, and I wanted to quit. I told the Lord that, um, uh, you know, this, is, this ministry thing's not going to work out for me because these people are way too mean, and I don't want to do this. And at the same time, um, where I had worked at McDonald's, not, that, not McDonald's Douglas, the Golden Arches, um, they called for me and said, if you'll move back, now, you know, some of you may not think this is a big deal, but we're going to send you, it's a real place, to Hamburger University. And we're going to train you. We want you to be a regional director, and that's six plus figures. And that's pretty good for somebody who was making like 12 or 15K because I'd given up all my accounting stuff. So that's pretty, you're going to take me back out there. You're going to, they're going to move me back out. Send me to HU. Hallelujah. <laughs> the dream of my life. <laughs> Actually, when I was 17, I, when I was 17, it was a dream. I really enjoyed working at McDonald's. I enjoyed giving hungry people their Big Mac. Hallelujah. And the Lord said to me, if you move back, you'll never get into the ministry. Because I told the Lord, let me go back to Raymond. and I'll be the best usher that Pastor Hagen has ever had in his life. But see, that's not my call. My call was to preach. And so we were going out, a friend of mine, we were going out to Winter Bible Seminar on the way out there. This was another time, a little bit, so we were going to Winter Bible. And I told the Lord, if you don't do something... I'm not going to do this. I, I can't. I can't do this. This ministry thing, you didn't tell me how hard it was. You didn't tell me how mean these people were. Now, I don't have any mean people at my church. There's a sign out there. It's invisible, but it says, no mean people allowed. <laughs> it gets you on the way in. And you're like, okay, I can go once, but I can't ever go back. Hallelujah. <laughs> no mean people allowed. And, uh. So on the way out there, I told the Lord, you got to help me. This will help somebody in the room tonight. It's helping me. So I remember I got to the Winter Bible Seminar, and I, I don't know, I think it was the Thursday night. There was a man named Floyd, and he got up and started singing. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't no. And to me, it became like a drinking song. <laughs> the more he sang, the more I laughed. The more I laughed, the drunker in the Holy Ghost I got. And it was one of those kind of sloppy drunks. Now, I don't know that from the world because I didn't drink a whole lot when I was backslidden, thank God. Um, a little bit, but not a lot. And, and, but when he began to sing with the way only Floyd could do it, can't nobody. And he sang it slow. Do me like Jesus. And, you know, he's got his big full voice. And the more he sang, the more I laughed. And the more I laughed, the sloppier I got. And so what happened was they helped me to the car. 
and I was planning, I was going to stay with, some of you heard this over and over again, but I was going to stay, my sister had arranged for me to stay with some of her friends at their apartment. Somehow, some way, in my direction challenge, that was before cell phones, I got there. But I remember, as I pulled up, that anointing came back on me. And I just began to sit there, and I pushed my seat back, and I began to sing to myself, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. And so I guess about six or seven in the morning, they got concerned about me. I think somebody came and found me singing in my car. Hallelujah. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Drunk in the Holy Ghost. I didn't want to quit anymore. I didn't want to quit anymore. And really when I went back home, everything kind of launched. Now, have I had a time or two when I wanted to quit again? Sure. But I know the cure. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Jesus. 